and I'm around there a lot and I see people a lot around that neighborhood and and um, I was interested in you know kind of the guy cleaning up after the election you know he's like sweeping the street like blowing the leaves off the street and the picture on the right is of course uh, you know the capital really just not I mean it was days after the you know the insurrection that at which the capital was attacked and then a, a big fence was put up around around it to protect uh, the capital, which I've never seen like that before. So I, I thought, oh, I would photograph something there. And of course there are soldiers around and all of that. And, and uh, you know, I found that really the most interesting thing for me was like how quiet it was and, you know, the fence in relation to the beautiful winter light, uh, you know, it sort of told the story to me that, uh, you know, that there was a, a barrier had been had been put up between um, people and and the symbol of, of democracy, the, the Capitol building. Yeah. Shall we go to the next? Yes. This was also part of the political section of the exhibition. Uh, right. Here we are in 1989. And both of these images, or both of these pictures, I should say, refer to the work by uh, uh, David Hammonds, uh, a well-known African-American artist. And interestingly, uh, the, the, the work which we can see on both of these pictures are now in a collection of the Glenstone Museum, also in our area. Right. Uh, I mean, this is a long, complex story, but it, it basically was a work that was commissioned by the Washington Project for the Arts when I worked there and I was involved in the installation and you know, production of, of, of this uh, outdoor uh, billboard. And it's called How You Like Me Now, which was a portrait of Jesse Jackson uh, as a white man uh, made, in, made by David Hammonds, painted by David Hammonds in uh, 1989. And it was a time when Jesse Jackson was running himself, running for president. And the work was, it became uh, so provocative within minutes after it was installed that uh, it was actually attacked, knocked down. We reinstalled it uh, in the galleries at Washington Project for the Arts. And the next day, Jesse Jackson came uh, and was photographed in front of it uh, for Time Magazine and I was there. So I was able to make my own photograph, but I put them together here because I thought it was interesting sort of the you know, the connection between the provocation and then the, what the media does. And, you know, I, I, get, I get the sense that David Hammonds, you know, it's, you know, he was, his intention was to provoke a response and he did that quite, mm -hmm. quite aptly. Yeah. Let's go on. Yeah. Well, I love um, a particular image on the left. Here we are in a section that deals with architecture. And it really reveals uh, your interest in the light, in the shades, in particular angles. And you said at one point that you would like to create pictures. I don't know whether I've got the words properly. Uh, that would be almost like paintings. On the other hand, the artist, German artist Gerhard Richter, the painter himself, called the photograph the most perfect picture. So it's very interesting that both of you are talking about the same thing, but from another, from another angle. And what we are looking at is a London street at night. Mm -hmm. um, and you were wa walking there. I think, isn't it somewhere close to the docks? in East London? 
You know, I I don't remember exactly where it is. I, I think it's it's around the city of London. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, right close to the Thames River, but further. Yeah. Yeah, further north from there. But I think it's near the city of London or in the city of London, mm -hmm. which is kind of the banking area. But uh, yeah, I've, I've, I, I love the connection between photography and painting. Uh, I look at a lot of painting in my work and have forever. And uh, so I, you know, I, I create images that I, I often think that they are, you know, they're very, um, you know, kind of controlled by the, the, the tyranny of, of modernism in some ways. And, you know, the way that I would uh, make pictures and compose them and use color, you know, it's very rough. It references, you know, a lot of, a lot of painting and modernist painting, as, you know, as well as earlier painting. But, um, you know, I think that uh, I'm trying to move away from that more now. And, and then on the right, you know, I've also done tremendous amount of photography on the street where, you know, I love the, the flow of people and what happens on the street. And so, you know, that's, you know, it's another you know, sort of part of my work, but we put them together in this mm -hmm. exhibition, really looking at the kind of, you know, at, at the street as a subject and also, the, you know, kind of the street and the road uh, and the urban environment and the rural environment. Yeah, let's go. So next. we should go through and try to. I think we are running out of time. So let's just, yeah, very similar to what we just saw. So let's right. go on. These are photographs of the landscape. Yeah, it's a section that about nature, you know, and kind of our, our relationship with nature. And, you know, I've always been interested in certainly, you know, the impact of people on, on nature. And I try to represent that in, in the photographs I make in, in various ways, you know, both subtly and, and more, you know, kind of overtly, yeah. but here, you know, the, the connection between the piles of coal and the mountains behind them, you know, it's, you know, it's a visual connection, but, but one that's also kind of dramatically, uh, you know, it, it shows how we, we tear things apart uh, yeah. for the, so next. next. You know, it's a similar, similar thing. I mean, this is like a a picture that is not in any way manipulated. It's actually two, you know, there, uh, there are two things going on. One is, you know, there's the photograph of of a kind of tarmac in in Santa Monica, and then the fence that that blocks us from it, and then on the fence has been hung a kind of scrim of of nature, mm -hmm. and then they hung on top of the scrim, a, you know, a no trespassing sign. So it's a, you know, it's a real kind of, you know, like collage of images that really presents a kind of conundrum of, you know, what is our relationship to nature? Mm -hmm. Next. Well, this is a wonderful image from uh, your visit of Cuba. Where again you took with you a very particular camera, uh, and you concentrated on making black and white pictures. It's a very soft image, and most of these images are very soft and dreamy. Yeah, I, when when I went to Cuba, I, I knew I wanted to make photographs but I didn't want to make photographs uh, that would sort of, you know, kind of continue the stereotype of, of, uh, of what we think of when we think of Cuba, which is, you know, Caribbean environment, bright colors, old cars, you know, uh, that kind of thing. So I, I really limited the way I worked there to, 
you know, one camera, black and white film. And, you know, I really wanted to, you know, to kind of like challenge myself to look at what, what's going on and look at people in a way that wouldn't, uh, you know, it wouldn't be sort of based on what I already knew about Cuba. And, it, you know, it was a really interesting and, and kind of powerful experience for me to, you know, meet people and talk to them and understand the, you know, the, the connections we have with people who live in a very different culture. And so we were, we were all afraid of, of being watched. <laughs> So that's what you said. Next. Yeah. And this is your special project that you made for this particular exhibition. Uh, it's a PowerPoint with images and writing that you have collected. It's a very fascinating artwork, uh, very well researched, uh, that tells us something about William Wilson Corcoran, which is not necessarily readily available. Yeah, we, we think of Corcoran, uh, William Wilson Corcoran as a, as a philanthropist because of his relationship with the Corcoran Gallery of Art and, and Washington. And, uh, you know, I, I found that uh, to be a kind of, you know, a, 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 a persona that he really constructed, uh, a very carefully calculated one. And I, I did a lot of research and I kind of, approached this as a historian, which I am, and, um, and I did a lot of research that was based on uh, what I knew uh, of Corcoran's, you know, life and his connection to uh, enslaved people. He himself grew up in a family that enslaved people. He himself enslaved people. Uh, he was very involved in, in the financing of the Mex uh, American War with Mexico, Mexican-American War. And uh, he was also a Southern sympathizer who uh, helped to fund the Confederacy during the Civil War. Uh, and he made, really made his money uh, doing all of this, you know, like uh, something that, that um, in the aftermath of the Civil War, uh, he, he then tried to, Kind of wash away with, uh, you know, philanthrop philanthropic projects, and so, you know, I was interested in this. And why don't we go through the slide just really quickly, and then, uh, you know, this shows a, it's like a census record that, you know, names the people he, he, uh, how many slaves he owned, and ne next slide. I talk about his his financing of of uh, the war bonds for the U US Treasury that paid for the American war with Mexico. Next slide. And uh, next. So my conclusion, let's go to the next slide. Uh, my conclusion really is that, uh, you know, th there's a lot of scrutiny that has to take place, uh, not only for, uh, you know, for us in Washington and connected to William Wilson Corcoran, but, you know, to so much of, of 19th century philanthropy and, and cult, you know, philanthropy related to culture. And, you know, that scrutiny is, is uh, ongoing. So many people are doing it now. It's really interesting. And, and uh, you know, I really think that you know, in this time now when, you know, we, we, we face, uh, you know, the kind of threats we do from, uh, from white supremacy, uh, which certainly has its roots in the 19th century and, and uh, you know, the history of slavery, that, you know, we really need to scrutinize the, you know, the monuments and the names on all our buildings and all of that. So uh, let's go on to answer some questions. Thank you, Philip. You're welcome. Thank you, Philip and Melena. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. 
Uh, uh, no, that was that was that was wonderful. Thank you for your collaboration and for bringing it to uh, the American University Museum. Uh, we uh, are open for questions. I have one. I was wondering, Philip, uh, what is the difference between putting together an exhibition like uh, In the Light of Memory and putting together a book like Redlands? Yeah, it's a good, that's a good question. And, uh, you know, I, I couldn't have done the exhibition without having done the book first. Uh, you know, the book was an opportunity for me to actually, you know, go back and really survey, you know, the pictures I had made over all these years. And, you know, the way I work is I would shoot them and, you know, I would get it developed uh, and maybe little prints made, but I, I didn't really look at it that closely. I would just do it and put it away with the intention of sometime going back to it. And so doing the book uh, was an opportunity to go back and really, you know, kind of dig into my, my archive of, of images and, and think about what it meant and then how to edit something from it. And then uh, the exhibition, uh, you know, was a fantastic opportunity to kind of take that to the next step and look at more broadly, you know, like all the work I had done. And, uh, you know, the difference is that uh, I worked so, you know, so well with, with Milena who, who really did, you know, the, the significant editing of the photographs. I mean, the curating of it. So uh, often I'm on the other side where I'm the curator, but here someone else, uh, you know, was, was instrumental in, in doing that. So, you know, that was a big, big part of the difference, but, you know, I think they're related uh, and I couldn't have done one without, you know, I couldn't have done the exhibition without having done the book first, I think. Mm -hmm. Or if I if I could, I, it would have been very different. Yeah. Are there any other questions out there? Any questions you would like to ask each other? Well, all right. I'll ask Philip a question. Can I ask me a question. No, just kidding. I have a, I have a question that I have been interested in for some time, and that's the question whether there is a picture in the show that is particularly significant for Philip or the one that he would never part with. <laughs> uh, you know, I, it, that's such a hard question. Um, the, you know, the, I don't want to say there's one that has the most significance. You know, I think, you know, there's, there's so many different things going on. I think that, you know, the pictures that are more personal have, you know, a lot of, you know, memories and they're significant in that way. Uh, in terms of not parting with them, you know, they're, they're reproducible, so I can always make more prints. <laughs> hey, well, photography, say that. <laughs> photography is never having to say goodbye. Yeah. Yes. There are some questions here I'm seeing in the chat, so okay, we maybe we can uh, we can answer a few of these. Uh, Judy Beth, you you ask, how did you start looking into Mr. Corcoran? Had you heard that he was a slave owner, or was this a surprise? Uh, you know, good question. I I actually um, I worked at the Corcoran Gallery of Art for twenty years you know, in various ways. And, um, and I knew that that Corcoran was a Southern sympathizer. That's kind of how he was described. And you know, he sympathized with the South, but, you know, he was really an art collector and a banker. And, uh, and so I just, you know, I, I, I had a lot of, you know, kind of like suspicion about, about that. I knew that he had gone to Europe during the Civil War and was collecting art there. I didn't know what he did. But, you know, as I started looking into it more, you know, I found out so much about him. I'm not the only one who had done this. So, you know, I, I certainly, you know, I, I did a lot of uh, reading and I, you know, I talked to other people who, who had much more 
uh, understanding of his role as a slave owner. But, you know, I did find some things that, that are new and I think there's much more to, to find. Um, so I, I just think it's, it's something that it just needs further uh, scrutiny. Here's a question from Amy Kincaid. Is there something surprising, meaningful you learned about your work from being curated? You've been curated, Philip. Yeah. Well, I would say that, um, you know, it was w one of the reasons I really wanted to go into this is I, I trusted uh, you, Jack, and, and you, Milena, to, to do it right. And, you know, knowing that, you know, I felt like I could go into it and then, you know, the hard thing was, of course, stepping back and, and letting the curatorial mm. process work without my, my, you know, being overly involved. I was involved in it. You and were. it was certainly conversations between, you yeah. know, all of us about the work and, you know, sh uh, showing pictures. I, I would deliver boxes of pictures to Milena and she would look through them and she would give me back, you know, kind of selection and we would go through that and and you know, it kind of came together in an interesting way for me. It was surprising. And the selection is very different than what I would have done if I did it myself, mm -hmm. or if I had curated, you know, I think. Mm -hmm. There's a, somebody named Beverly Flowers has uh, raised her hand. Beverly, you wanna turn off your, uh, or you wanna turn on your microphone? Need to turn on your microphone. Got it. Um, having been a docent at the Corcoran for a number of years, I just wanted to say thank you to Philip for the amazing shows that he brought from uh, Robert Frank to Raised by Wolves to Gordon Park and just the education that um, that he gave us. And I'm, I am very interested how in how the... Um, the Corcoran information is being presented now. Is that, do you have a, a booklet of your photographs and the historical information or how are you, how are you showing that now? So the, the work about William Wilson Corcoran is, is presented in the exhibition as a, as a video, which is actually, I made it with PowerPoint. I, would, I just used the, the sort of presentation, you know, uh, software that we all use to to you know make make a you know a kind of art, historical argument about something but i wanted it to be a work of art i wanted it to be extremely visual and so i did it that way and it's just presented on a big screen and you sit and watch it it runs about a half an hour and i've also uh i've made uh i printed out all the all the pages uh, so that you can actually read it as a as an artist book. So it it functions in both ways, and I I urge everybody who can to go and see it. And you know it it takes some time and looking and reading and maybe see it twice. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean I really appreciate your your comments and thank you for your hard work as a docent at the Corker. So, so Milena, do you have any parting comments before we must? Oh, it really was a terrific experience um, working with Philip and being allowed to go through all of his photographs and in a certain way led by him, which was also extraordinarily comforting since I knew that he's also a brilliant curator um, I knew that I'm working with somebody else who, if I make a wrong move, would probably gently <laughs> help me to get out of that wrong move. And I, I would like to thank also you. I think we both felt that we are very free preparing mm -hmm. this exhibition and that you were very much supporting us. And I think it was your enthusiasm and openness that made it all come together. So thank you both. Well, thank you for the opportunity for working with both of you.
Uh, the exhibition is open at, until December 12th. We are uh, open uh, without reservations uh, 11 to four Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, every Friday and Saturday and Sunday. So please, uh, as Philip said, come and see the show, come and see the catalog. It really is just a perfect interview uh, in that catalog. And uh, I hope okay. you're all there. I, I noticed, I saw that the um, museum is not open over the Thanksgiving weekend, is that true? I believe that's true, yeah. So yeah, um, I don't know the date, but uh, the Friday, Saturday and Sunday of the, after Thanksgiving, the museum is not open, uh, but it is open this coming weekend. Yes. And, and then the weekend after Thanksgiving. Yeah. I mean, after, at the weekend after the weekend after Thanksgiving. Yeah. And, and I so. also want to mention that the catalog uh, is free. So if you come to exhibition, you can pick it up. You don't have to pay anything. And again, thanks, Jack, for making that possible for the audiences. Ah, well, thank you both. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.